don't ever want to leave this beach. Whether it's sand and sea, drinks and dining, or pure relaxation that you crave, Occidental Punta Cana has you covered. And in this ultimate resort tour, we're going to show you it all. From breakfast to dinner, and from the lobby to the beach, we'll tour the entire property to help you decide if the Occidental Punta Cana is the right spot for your next beach vacation. And along the way, we'll show you inside our royal suite as well. Now let's get this tour started. Once you arrive at the resort, you'll likely be dropped off at the lobby. Now if you book a royal room, at that point you're gonna be taken on a golf cart to another area to check in. But if you booked a standard room, you will check in back here. So let's go show you around the lobby. Upon entering the lobby, you'll find the general check-in area to your right. Royal and First Club guests do have their own separate check-in areas, which we'll show you a bit later. On the other side of the lobby, you'll find one of our favorite spots on the entire resort, the Lobby Bar. Open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily, and with some of the friendliest staff on the resort, this was our go-to spot for a pre-dinner cocktail, and also one of our top spots to grab a coffee in the morning. Other points of interest in the lobby include the excursion and transportation desks, plus a shop where you'll find a wide variety of items including beach gear, souvenir t-shirts, pool accessories, and of course, Mama Wana. Now that we've given you a tour of the lobby, we're going to show you a few other spots that can be found nearby at the front of the property, including the clinic and disco, the spa and the gym, plus more shops. We did find the locations of the clinic and disco to be a bit odd, as you had to walk south along the road that leads to the lobby. Just past the 24-hour medical clinic, you'll find the disco, which was open from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. daily. While the sign out front was pretty cool, we weren't too impressed with the disco itself, as we made just one short visit during our stay. On the other side of the lobby at the front of the resort, you'll find the shopping center, here you can find another gift shop, a cigar shop, an ATM, and a spot for souvenirs. Just a short walk past the shopping center, you'll find your spot to get some quality relaxation or a good workout. While we didn't book any services offered at the Metamorphosis Spa, we did find the inside of the spa to be tranquil and incredibly relaxing. Just a little bit past the spa, you'll find the gym, and that's where we're headed to next. This has to be the prettiest path to a gym that I've ever seen. While the path to the gym was quite impressive, the gym itself was not, although we did find it to be a cool and comfortable spot to get in a workout. So we started out by showing you the lobby area here and also checking out the medical facility and disco, then also the shopping area, spa and gym. Next, we're gonna show you the main buffet, the main pool, and most of the a la carte restaurants before making our way through the rest of the property and ending our day on the beach. Back at the lobby, there's one more spot you'll definitely want to know about, especially if you're not a royal guest, and that's El Alcazar, the main buffet. This buffet was open daily from 6.30 to 10.30 for breakfast, 12.30 to 3 for lunch, and 6.30 to 10.30 for dinner. As we show you through the breakfast offerings at the main buffet, we would note that royal guests have their own beachfront restaurant where they can dine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We did find the quality of food at the royal restaurant to be superior to that of the buffets, and we'll show you some of that dining experience later in this tour. Now, if you'd rather have a larger variety of options to choose from, or prefer buffet-style dining over a la carte, the main buffet may be the preferred dining option for you. One of the things that we enjoyed most about the main buffet was the variety of fresh fruit. We were also happy to find a selection of fresh juices and smoothies. Another of our breakfast favorites was the made-to-order omelet station, which was almost always busy. But the thing I love most about the breakfast buffet was definitely the crepe station, which served up made-to-order crepes with a variety of sweet fillings. 
There are also a few items that can be found on the buffet for all three meals. This includes a variety of breads, salads, cold cuts, and cheeses. Moving on to the main lunch buffet, guests will always find a variety of pastas. And while this pizza was freshly made, it was far from the best pizza at the resort. We were pretty impressed with the variety of salads on the main buffet in addition to this egg fried rice station. While we show you some more footage of the main lunch buffet, we would also like to mention that there is a second buffet on the beach that is open for lunch only. While that buffet is typically open every day, it was only open for the final day of our stay. We'll show you that buffet along with its amazing beachfront views later in this video. While we found the selection of desserts on the lunch buffet to be impressive, we found the quality to be just average. But like the breakfast buffet, we were very happy with the selection of fruits and juices. Moving on to dinner, you'll find a lot of the same items that you'll find for lunch at the main buffet. This includes pasta and pizza, a good selection of salads, a variety of baked goods, grilled chicken, and a selection of traditional Dominican cuisine. While the dinner buffet wasn't the most impressive of the resort buffets we visited, we were impressed with this selection of sushi, which we found on the buffet during one night of our stay. We did also find the presentation to be much better on the dinner buffet, and the quality of the desserts to be quite a bit better as well. And while the desserts weren't as good as some of the other Dominican resorts we visited, I definitely did find a few that I enjoyed. Now that we've shown you the buffet, it's time to check out the main pool, which you can find just a few steps from the lobby entrance. The main pool is by far the largest pool on the Occidental Punacana property, and also where you'll find the most activity and the pool bar. Once you make your way through this bar front waterfall, you'll find a small selection of liquors, mixers, pre-made frozen cocktails, and a bartender who's more than happy to serve you your drink of choice. If the lively area around the pool bar isn't quite your scene, we'd recommend making your way to the east end of the main pool where you can find a more quiet and relaxing area. While the main pool was one of the more popular spots on the resort, the huge pool had room for everyone to spread out and never felt too crowded during our stay. When the sun went down and the main pool closed, it became a spot for live music, and on this night, even a dance party. Located just off the main pool, right next to the pool bar, you'll find the snack bar. This spot was open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily, and offers a selection of easy grab-and-go snacks, including chicken strips, french fries, nachos, and burgers. The food here was actually better than we expected, and the views are some of the better ones on the resort. Now that we've shown you around the lobby and the main pool, it's time to head just south of the main pool area, where you'll find a number of spots for dining and drinks, as well as this outdoor theater, your spot on the resort to catch an evening show. Right next to the outdoor theater, you'll find Las Cayenas Bar, which is open from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Here you'll find a limited selection of liquors and mixers, plus a couple pre-mixed frozen drinks and Presidente beer on tap. Just past Las Cayenas, you'll find Las Reses, the resort's a la carte steakhouse. We did dine at Las Reses during one night of our stay at the Occidental Puna Cana. Here we really enjoyed the atmosphere, and we also loved the salad bar, which included salads, cold cuts and cheeses, and some fresh olives. Our order included the chicken wings and a couple different types of steaks. We'll tell you more about what we thought of this dinner experience in our next video. Right next to Las Reses, you'll find another of the resort's a la carte dinner options at the Oriental Restaurant. 
We dined at the Oriental restaurant for dinner on the first night of our stay at the Occidental Punta Cana. Just like Las Reyes' Steakhouse, we found a few things we liked about the Oriental restaurant, but also some things we didn't. Just outside of the Oriental restaurant, you'll find another gift shop offering a variety of clothes, souvenirs, plus some local art. Now that we've covered all the ground level options around the main pool area, it's time to take you upstairs where you'll find several more options for drinks and dining on the resort. The first of two a la carte dinner spots found on the rooftop, La Hacienda is your go-to spot for Mexican food on the resort. We found La Hacienda to offer one of the better atmospheres of the a la carte restaurants. This restaurant also offered a salad bar, which included one of our favorite things, guacamole. Our entrees included a steak and chicken dish, and we'd have to say that the dining experience at La Hacienda was one of the better overall experiences that we had at the Occidental Punta Cana. If you're looking for a nighttime dining spot that isn't a sit-down restaurant, you'll find one option at La Taqueria. We'd heard some really good things about La Taqueria from other Occidental Punta Cana guests. And even though we weren't hungry at all when we ordered these tacos, we just had to see if they lived up to the hype. Right next to La Taqueria, you'll find another small bar at La Bodeguita, which also offers a limited selection of liquors and frozen drinks, and of course, Presidente. Another nighttime grab-and-go option can be found next door at La Pizzeria, where the fresh brick oven pizzas are made to order. And if you're a late night snacker, La Pizzeria has you covered, as it was open from 6.30 p.m. to 6 a.m. daily. Just past La Pizzeria, you can find the Italian a la carte restaurant Via Veneto, which was the one restaurant that we didn't have a chance to visit during our stay. But we did still have a chance to tour the interior, and it looked really nice. If you're enjoying this video so far, and would like to see our tours of more Dominican resorts, our Caribbean cruise experiences, or our travel adventures around Florida, be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn the notifications on. As we make our way through this beautiful resort and towards the beach, we have to mention that this is the oldest and least expensive resort that we've stayed at in Punta Cana. And while we weren't expecting the overall experience at this resort to be on par with our stays at newer, more expensive properties, there were still some things that we absolutely loved about this resort and even preferred over our more expensive resort stays. And we'll tell you more about that in the next episode of this series. Now we're here only two weeks after Hurricane Fiona came through and we're still in the middle of hurricane season. But as you can see from this completely empty pool, this resort is nowhere near capacity. So keep that in mind as you're watching this footage because it's probably not an accurate representation of how busy the resort typically is. Due to the fact that this pool was almost always extremely quiet during our stay and that we never saw an actual name for it, we refer to it as the chill pool. And if you're looking for a great alternative to the beach to relax and unwind, this is definitely a spot you'll want to check out. Right next to the chill pool, you'll find a great spot for the little ones at Flip Kids Club, which offers a variety of entertainment programs for kids. As you continue to make your way towards the beach, you'll find another great option for kids at this playground. Overall, we found this resort to be pretty kid-friendly, although we didn't see too many kids during our stay. As we make our way to yet another of the property's beautiful pools, we want to know if you visited an Occidental property or any other Punta Cana resorts. Be sure to share which resort you visited and what your experience was like in the comments. Just like the pool we named the Chill Pool, we're not sure what the actual name of this pool is either. But as you can tell from this footage, it was also a pretty chill spot during our visit. But since this pool was a little more lively than the Chill Pool, and it's closest to the beach, 
we named it the beach pool. The beach pool is your go-to spot for a game of pool volleyball. And while it also occasionally has some organized activities, there were never any going on when we were around. We found this pool to be especially picturesque at night, and it was one of our favorite places to visit around sunset and before heading to dinner. Right next to the beach pool, you'll find the building known as Las Caracolas, which is where you'll find the a la carte seafood restaurant, the beachfront lunch buffet, and yet another bar. It's here that you'll also find these unique seashell chandeliers and perhaps the most beautiful views on the entire resort. While we show you some more of these amazing views from Las Caracolas, we ask that if you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Now that you've seen the views from Las Caracolas, it's time to check out the food. As we mentioned earlier, this beachfront lunch buffet was only open on one day out of our six day stay, which was likely a result of the low occupancy levels at the resort due to the recent hurricane. The buffet did thankfully open up on the final day of our stay, so we were able to enjoy the beach buffet experience. While we found the selection of food to be rather limited compared to the main buffet, the quality was similar, and we were able to find some food that we were excited to try, plus some good coffee. And while this food was far from the best we've had at a resort buffet, the views were pretty hard to beat. When the sun goes down over Punacana, Las Caracolas transforms into a seafood restaurant and the only beachfront and open air a la carte on the resort. We found the dinner menu at Las Caracolas to include a good variety of seafood options for soups, appetizers, and entrees. And while we definitely enjoyed Las Caracolas atmosphere the most out of the five a la carte restaurants, you'll have to tune in to our next episode to see what we thought of the food. So we do want to talk about the location of the different types of rooms here on the resort. We booked a royal level room and those are located in buildings 19, 20, and 21 in this little circle area here closest to the royal restaurant, the royal beach bar, and the royal beach area. Now buildings 14 through 18 are the first club buildings and our understanding is that you have to be a vacation club owner to book in this area. They do have a clubhouse here with a little pool and they also have a beach bar and a beach area. And all of the other types of rooms you'll find in the bigger buildings, buildings 10 through 13 and also buildings 22 through 26. Now that we've shown you most of the pools and restaurants, it's time to give you a peek into the royal area. For those of you who do decide to book Royal on your Occidental Punakana visit, you'll notice the difference from the moment you arrive at the resort and get transported to your own special check-in area. And while we take our ride to the Royal check-in area, we have to mention that while you typically have to pay extra for the Royal experience, you can get an amazing deal on a Royal level stay during certain times of the year. In fact, our early October stay in an 883 square foot Royal suite ended up being our cheapest stay ever at a Puna Cana resort. Once checked into our Royal Level accommodation, we made our way up to our Royal Level suite. Once inside our suite, we were truly impressed by the amount of space, as this unit was much bigger than any Punakana accommodation we'd stayed in before, and even bigger than the apartment we live in. We will be sharing more information about this suite, and by now, we're sure you know where to find it. Now that we've given you a peek inside a Royal Level suite, it's time to show you some of the Royal Level amenities and what better place to start than the Royal Jacuzzi Pool. With its hundreds of massaging jets and being accessible to Royal Level guests only, we found the Royal Jacuzzi Pool to be perhaps the most relaxing spot on the entire resort. Now that you've seen a royal suite and the royal pool, it's time to visit the royal restaurant, where royal level guests can dine for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
While we don't want to give away our whole royal dining experience just yet, we will say that we may have eaten here for every breakfast and lunch if we weren't filming this tour. Because after all, how can you pass up a meal with an insanely beautiful view like this? One thing we didn't realize during our first couple of days at the Occidental Punakana is that there's another level of guests at this resort known as the First Club. We learned that the First Club accommodations are reserved for Occidental Vacation Club members only and that the general public cannot book a First Club room. And while First Club guests do have their own special amenities such as this lounge and pool area, those amenities can be enjoyed by Royal Level members as well. And while we never felt the need to use the tiny First Club pool, it was still nice to know that we could have if we wanted to. At this point in the tour, we've shown you the majority of this beautiful resort. But there's one major attraction that we still have to show you, and we bet you can guess what it is. While the Occidental Punakana may not be the newest or the most luxurious resort, it has a couple things going for it that can rival any other Punakana property. It's postcard worthy beach and the amazing Royal Level Beach Bar. While we'd love to tell you all about how beautiful the Occidental Punakana Beach is, there's some places that are simply too beautiful to describe. And since this beach is absolutely one of them, we're gonna take a minute to let the footage speak for itself. If this gorgeous beach alone isn't enough to have you planning a trip to Punakana, perhaps the thought of sipping on some cocktails at this amazing beach bar will be. As much as we did enjoy the Royal Level restaurant, our favorite perk of the Royal Level was without a doubt, the beach bar. After all, where can you sip on endless premium cocktails relax in a jacuzzi tub, and even enjoy delicious cappuccinos and lattes, all while taking in the views of this stunning beach. And perhaps the best thing about this beach bar is that it stays open into the night, because who doesn't like to enjoy a couple after dinner drinks on the beach? While you won't be able to enjoy a beach bar at this resort if you don't book Royal Level, you will still have access to a stretch of beach that is just as beautiful as the Royal section. While there was still some rebuilding going on when we visited, we were truly amazed by how beautiful this property was given that a hurricane had blown through just a couple weeks prior. If you're watching this video after December 17th, 2022, then you can watch the second half of this series by clicking here right now. Otherwise, make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss the next episode when it posts. Thanks for watching.